Hello and welcome to the Port of Iron preview show. We have a very special show in store for us tonight. Um, I'm joined by not one, not two, but three very special guests as we're doing a collaboration with the official Korean podcast. I'm joined by Johnny McNabb, Damian Mullen and Stephen Crawford. Stephen's a recurring guest, so welcome to you all, fellas. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. In fact, some are saying this this is the best collaboration since Busted and McFly joined forces. Ah. High praise indeed there. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know who these people are you talk of. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, before we get uh, started, I'd just like to say um, don't forget to like and subscribe to the We Are Ports TV YouTube channel and you can check us out on Spotify, Anchor and Google Podcast. What about yourself, fellas? Where can we find you guys? I obviously um, Twitter and, and, and Facebook, obviously at Core NFC and and YouTube, we're trying to get it up and running again with a videographer, but the official Korean podcast, we're right every week, and uh, Damien does a good job hosting. Uh, Ian, give me that tenor now for, for that <laughs> podcast, Damien. That's so, not what um, you said before the show started. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you started you, you started with me, so uh, no, that's, that's where you can, you can get us. Good stuff. Stephen, I believe it's your birthday today, so on behalf of everyone, Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> having a wee tin here they celebrate like I don't know what yeah. it says about me that I'm on a podcast tonight and not out celebrating my birthday maybe it's just the, the circumstances jo- of COVID I'm helping you out Stephen <laughs> good man <Mandy. laughs> right. happy birthday Stephen cheers uh, lads well, well happy birthday from everyone at Port of Ireland Football Club Stephen hope Thank you, you very have, much. A, have a great day um, appreciate it Right, so this weekend coming, uh, Port of Down entertained Korean at Shamrock Park, uh, hence why you you guys are on the show. But before we get into that, uh, I think Port of Down have uh, been making the headlines the last couple of days. Uh, Stephen will give you the floor first on this. Uh, Lee Bonus, uh, our star man, has made a £100,000 <laughs> transfer to Larne. What's your thoughts on that? I think uh, when I tweeted the other day, like, uh... I fully appreciate any club wanting to spend whatever money they have and fair play to Lauren and Gwintour and whoever it is spending the, the, the big money and fair play to Port of Down. You have to get the, the fast amount of money as you can for their players. Lee Bonus obviously a prize asset. He'd signed a new contract there so the ball was firmly in the Port's uh, court. I just worry for the rest of the league in terms of what it, the knock-on effect is because I know from speaking to uh, a few managers and different clubs they're now finding that other players' values have seemed like skyrocketed and uh, that's a worry and how do, how do teams with less well-off finances start buying other players um, just sitting thinking today I don't think the Irish League clubs really know the value of an Irish League player um, <laughs> like, uh, because there's been so few uh, money transfers in the last few years what what is an average Irish League player worth now uh, no offence to Lee Bonus if Lee Bonus is worth £100,000 how much is Jay Donnelly worth 200,000, 300,000 for him. Where does it stop? But I just think, as I say, I don't think we, we really know the value of an Irish League player. And obviously, you don't want to sell a player short, but uh, I just worry where the, where the future lies. Yeah. Fellas, you know, these are Korean fans. Uh, Korean, similar to Port of Iron, a provincial club, uh, and wouldn't be one of the clubs that <laughs> we well, were essentially we're, we're referring to Lauren Linfield and Glen Torn here because they're the clubs with the big money. How do you guys feel a- about that? You know, like Stephen says, do you think transfer fees are going to spiral out of control here? You know, since the league bonus I, move. Yeah, I'm just wondering just before we start, Neil, with all this money, does that affect our appearance fees for this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> our appearance fees gone down, Andy. <laughs> I, I, I think. I, have gone up with the amount of money I have. <laughs> I mean, like seriously though, I mean, I know what Stephen's saying, and it's something that we've touched upon with Orn. Uh, I think Orn maybe even mentioned it on Saturday as well in his post-match uh, comments. And I think one of the things that Orn was saying was that as a club, what Stephen's saying about the money aspect, and, and Orn was saying that they didn't want to as a club get embroiled in this whole transfer thing where maybe they're going to have to pay over the odds for players or get involved in um, haggling for players, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. I think from Corian's point of view, from Oren as a manager and Colin McHenry as the chairman, I think they have a very clear way of doing business and I don't think they will be affected by the likes of a, a, a Larne or a Glentorn splashing big money. I think 
Korean have a budget. They obviously have to try and stick to it. And you can see from what Korean have done in previous years in the terms of the transfers and transfer windows, Orn will scour the clubs and, and bring in players that they can afford, but also the ones that he feels can add something to the squad. He won't go and buy players just for the sake of it. Not that I'm saying Lauren have done that by any means, but I think to finish from a Korean point of view, they have a way of doing things, and I don't think that will change given Lee Bonus's transfer to Lauren. Yeah. No, no, fair enough. You know, at the end of the day, you've got to take care of yourselves. And it, it is a case of you can't just because somebody else is splashing the cash doesn't mean that, you know, everyone else has to do it. And but like you say, Stevie, you know, it is going to be difficult for other teams to compete now. You know, if, you know, if Lauren are paying 100 grand for Lee Bonus, just suddenly the Glen start paying even more money, you know, where does it end? And then does it mean the rest of the league are going to be left behind? Because, uh, you know, we use Lost Ben Doherty to Lauren as well. So you are, you know, you have kind of experienced that. Albeit, and we've talked about this before, Stevie. He's, I think he's done all right out of that deal. You know, with the you know, the player he's got on part exchange, like. Yeah. But it, it's 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 one of these things now with the Irish league. You know, where does it go from here? You know, do transfer fees spiral out of control and does everyone else get left behind? But hopefully, that's that's not the case. But I, I, there's been a lot said on Twitter this week, and there's. Like it's not Lee Bonus's fault at the end of the day, you know, no. that he's had to pay a hundred grand and then people are saying this is out of hand and Jay Donnie be worth this. Imagine what Benny Arkins or Glenn Ferguson mm-hmm. or Liam Boyce would be worth now. Do you know what I mean? It's it's yeah, but it's it's different times. Yeah. And but what I will say is, you know, obviously being a Portadown fan, I, I think Portadown were absolutely right to dig their heads in and demand that kind 100%. of money because yeah. if well, from, from from your point of view, Neil, like I mean, I've noticed in social media over the last couple of days, people talking about the Lee bonus transfer, and a lot of the people were saying he's not worth the money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But those are people that haven't probably seen a lot of Lee bonus. You probably have more than most. <laughs> Maybe it's an unfair question to ask you, but do you think it's a fair price for Lee bonus? No, I think he's worth 200 grand, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Good answer. Good well, listen, answer. You should be see, doing the negotiation. Yeah. You see, the thing with Lee is, right, he's not a player that wanted to rock the boat, and he didn't rock the boat. And mm-hmm. I think in this day and age, I don't think anybody can stand in the way of a young player that's wanting to, to play full-time football. And, of course, from a Port Iron fan's perspective, it's disappointing that he's went to somebody else that's in the league. Of course, you don't want that to happen. But at the same time, from the club's perspective, you can't turn down that kind of money because it can help rebuild us in other areas, which we do need. And then it obviously will go into the infrastructure of the club as well, I'd imagine. But Lee himself, you know, he's a nice guy. You know, he's humble. Um, he, he puts a shift in. I know there's people saying he's only scored three league goals this season and stuff. And of course, that's a concern. But at the end of the day, like, I don't think he's been getting the service. But... He, he doesn't stop running, you know, he works really hard. He, he's, he's selfless too. So he's a different kind of striker. I think everyone nowadays assumes a striker is just all about banging him in, but we all know now that the game's changed and it's sure man said he don't even have a striker. So <laughs> it's the game's changed and Lee brings something else and I'm, I'm sure he's going to want to improve in his goal return, but I hope he doesn't because I don't like Lauren. <laughs> one, of the, one of the big things I've, I've taken from him, and I spoke to Lee for the Northern Ireland Football League website, is that you know, three years ago he was playing you know lower league football, you know middle of the league football, I think. So it just shows you how the rise, you know, playing in the lower league and then coming back up to the Irish league. And I know he had a few in the championship as well for poor down, but the rise has been unbelievable. And I think you know we mentioned about playing players high wages and big fees, but I think that's what Warren's got the best out of players of that as well. We've had a lot of boys come in from, from junior football as well, and it works well for us, and it nearly seems that Warren gets the best out of players who have something to prove. You know, like a Jamie Glackin, a, a Matthew Shevlin, you know, Connor McKendry, for example, and the other deal as well, and, and guys who are maybe getting, you know, the first opportunity in Irish League, Aaron Trainer, and Stephen O'Donnell, this goes on, and so maybe that's, you know, and, and as you say, 100 grand for, for Lee Bonus. I'm, I'm sure Port Down are delighted with that there. They, they dug their heels in and got as much as they can for them. And I know Tippy's brought in is it six players now um, as well. So, yeah, and, and for all you know, maybe 20, 30 grand could go on somewhere in, on the ground or, you know, behind the scenes. So, yeah, and, you know, for, for all we could argue, he's worth 100 grand. I'm sure the money is, 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 is all for Port Down and, and for all good causes for them. So, 
fair play to them. Um, again, it's not Lee Bonus's fault that the team's paid 100 grand for him. So I think obviously, I think League, I think with Glenn Thorne saying Shane McCartan for 100 grand there last year, I think it's just sort of like, where does it probably end? probably more of the question um, as well. And I just don't want sort of the Irish League turning into maybe like Scotland where one or two or three teams dominate, if you know what I mean. Um, so because the competitiveness has been so good the last few years. But who knows? Um, but sure, that's, that's for, we don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately. You see as well, you know, with regards, the transfers there, I saw, I've saw a few tweets, you know, doing the rounds and you know what? I know we we'll laugh and joke about the Lauren thing and stuff, but, you know, this time they put their money where their mouth is, but at the end of the day, it's going to add even more pressure on them now because, you know, if you're signing a hundred grand player, you know, you really need to be challenging for a league and they obviously think league's going to help them challenge and fair play, you know, they've stumped up the cash and, but like you said, it's where does it end? You know, do teams keep lifting it and lifting it and lifting it, you know, with the money? But, that, 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 you know, they've been told, this is what, if you want our player, this is what you're going to have to pay. And they've paid it. So it is what it is. Look. The worry, yeah, the the worry I would have in the Irish League is that a team, for example, like Glenavon or a Korean or any other teams aren't full time, might spend more money than what they have. And you're going to get Ireland in recent years, how many teams have sort of went to the wall and trying to trying to compete. So that would be my worry um, as well. Um, hopefully no teams, you know, feel they need to do that. And, you know, we've been lucky the last few years, we've been able to compete with the big boys, obviously, at the top end of the table. And we've won a, we've won a couple of trophies as well. And Cliftonville are doing that this year. And for all the money, and I mentioned this in our own podcast, for all the money being, spilled, being spent um, by teams, Cliftonville have actually profited well from the, from the swaps they've had. You know, they get... Aaron McCary and, and sorry, they get Jimmy McDonough for the Aaron McCary did and he's hit the ground rolling as well. So, and Paul O'Neill from Glenthorn, who I think is a fantastic player. So, yeah, it's all about spending money wisely. And, and I mentioned this as well in our podcast that if a part time player becomes available, the Korean obviously need to they obviously be the best option um, or or try and be the best option if you can to get players of that ilk. I think a player ultimately is only worth what somebody's going to play, pay for him, but. You know, if Porter Down said we want 100 grand and Larn go, we're not paying that, then he doesn't become a 100 grand player, you know. So, the, ultimately, Larn felt that they that's what he was worth. And I think, uh, as you were touching on there, they maybe get stung in the past going for a few big players and they didn't get the deals over the line, but they were determined to get this one over the line. And if he leads them to the league or the Irish Cup or takes them into Europe again, they go, that's proved to be, be worth their money, you know. As we say there, just to worry is for the teams below those ones those full time teams, how do they then buy clubs if clubs are adding maybe an extra 20, 30, 40 percent on the player's value? You know, so that's only the only question I would have on it. But fair play to Porter Down. You brought a player in and you sold for a hundred thousand, I guess. <laughs> you know, it, it's obviously done something right, you know. Yeah. No, well, I'm sure like everybody at the club wishes Lee all the best. Uh Porter Down actually play Lauren a few weeks' time. So Hopefully he doesn't score. <laughs> um, on Saturday past there, so uh, it was the Irish Cup. Well, the old fifth round, but it's now the, the first round proper. <laughs> so the first round doesn't it doesn't have the same ring, does it? <laughs> I know. It's confusing, isn't it? Yeah. So you defeated Windmill Stars uh, quite convincingly, and we got past Limavady not quite so convincingly. So mm-hmm. Damien, I, I've seen you you cover a bit of Limavady United up there, and they came down to Shamrock Park and put in a good performance there. And sorry, good side. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was talking to Andy Law this morning, um, and Andy he said that they the left Shamrock Park disappointed, and that tells you everything that you need to know. I mean, they, they're a championship side, and also. Andy was saying that their preparations for the game were badly affected with injuries and COVID. I think at training last week, they had 12 at one night training and 14 at another night's training. So it wasn't ideal preparation to go and take on a a premiership side. But um, yeah, I mean, I think from speaking to Andy, Limavati had chances in the first half. And then I think from his account, they had a good chance just shortly before Portadown opened the scoring and then it was 1-0 right till the very end when Porter Down scored his second. Um, so, yeah, Andy, you know, Limavati have played a number of premiership clubs this season and have done quite well. They actually beat uh, Dungannon, I think it was in the League Cup, uh, lost to Warren Point, lost to Larne, I think lost to Korean in, in a competition. But, um, 
seemed to be going well. Um, but what I would say was Andy, speaking to Andy as well, he did praise Portadown for just how they were treated. Um, he had lots of praise for Tippy, the players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think from you know on behalf of Andy, speaking on his behalf today, just pass on his thanks and the players' thanks to the club because they had a, a great day out and on another day could have left maybe with a little bit more. Yeah, no, absolutely. Portadown, in my opinion, they weren't at the races at all. I think confidence is a bit low at the minute um, after the Glenavon and Ballymena results there. So, But you know what? Cup football, at the end of the day, it's just about being in the hat for the next round. And we got through, and I think a wee bit of quality shone through at the end. You know, Chrissy Lavery scored a great goal. Um, Adam Sally had scored a, a good header to put us 1-0 up in the first place. But Lemavati got through a few times, and you're just like, mm, on another day, or maybe a team with a bit more quality, you know, could have could have finished this off but thankfully we got through but on the way up home in the car we we're listening to the draw and there's a few a few teams you don't want to get so to speak and uh when they get drawn away to Korea and I was like oh, it's one of the draws I definitely didn't want so <laughs> well, on, the, on the other on the other side of that coin Andy Law was very disappointed because that would be the draw that he would have wanted as yeah. a Korean man and a lot of the players in the Lima Valley side have got connections with Korean football club have played there etc so, slight doors moment. If Limavady had a beat Porto down on Saturday, uh-huh. they would have had a, a plum draw against Corey, in which they would have loved. So, unlucky for Andy, but uh, maybe unlucky for you. But here, by the time you guys come to play the Irish or Irish Cup game, I'm sure you may have a new look team. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is true. This is very true. When you're talking there about Limavady players, the goalkeeper Declan Brown is, is his name. Uh, he was excellent on Saturday. Uh, towards the end, he made three or four really, really top saves. So they asked, "Who, who, who do you give man of the match?" And it's like definitely the Lima Valley keeper. Like, but poor Down could have been two or three 0 down early doors. But thank you <laughs> not. But <laughs> but yeah, no. Sure, sure. Yeah, bet on for him for hundred grand. <laughs> <laughs> but the draw itself, you know, it's it's threw up a, a couple of you know all Premiership ties, and of course you want to avoid you know the, the big teams in the league and stuff, but. Corey in a way isn't exactly an easy fix. There's no easy games, but that's <laughs> one of the most one of the most difficult games we could have got. But Corey, and, you know, they'll be targeting the cup as well, I suppose. Well, so I will just we're talking about the league and the and and, and the bigger clubs, so called bigger clubs, buying the players. And when you look at the league now, it's almost like a, a three horse race on paper at the moment. You know, the Linfield, the Glentorn, and Cliffle. For the likes of a Korean or whoever else, the Irish Cup and the European qualification that that brings becomes ever more important. Would you not think, guys, that 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 what they're saying that the cup becomes ever more important, given the way the league's shaping up? One hundred percent. Like you know, it's going to be a real battle for for anybody. They try and wrestle in the top three teams. Like it's going to take some monumental collapse from from all of them. They sort of get in front of them. So. Irish Cup, and we all know as we're saying there, cup ties, it's all about who performs on the day and according of a bit of pedigree in the, in the last few cup competitions. So I'd say there'll be a lot of teams looking at it and saying, look, look at the draw and get the final and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, of course. Obviously, we, we've another cup final to look forward to as well. So players will be playing for cup final places in the League Cup. Uh, and obviously, you know, we, we'll always have four down before that as well at home in the Irish Cup. So I'm sure Warren would have his eye on a player or two to bring in as well. So, yeah, it's all systems go. And, you know, sort of, we, we always seem to go on a, we, a good run after Christmas as well. So, here's hopefully the start of a, of a good run. And they haven't won the league. It was at six games, I think it is now. So, we definitely need to get back to, to winning ways. And we have a tough game on Saturday. Funny, I, I always, we've never had an easy game against Port in my lifetime ever. Um, I think, well, the last one was 2 0, and one of them was an OG, and the last one was the last kick of the game. So, yeah, I'll be expecting probably the same. It's always really, really difficult the way they, the way they pour it in. Last season there, when, whenever we played, there was a couple of dodgy penalties in those oh, games yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after, after watching the Irish League, uh, I don't want to berate the referees, but there was a few questionable ones in the Irish Cup tie on the Friday night. And I actually remember that game well. It was like a Tuesday night, and I think we got, it was two penalties and Ben scored both of them, and neither of them were, were penalties. And I think one who, was who, who was the referee? Can you remember? I'm nearly sure it was Ross Dunlop. Because uh, I think I remember writing that for I think one was a handball, I think Greg Hall, but yeah, you know, he, he couldn't he couldn't have done anything and the other one was for Skinner was pulling, pulling down Skinner. So 
Um, never know yeah. who's down, but to be fair, they, they were they were given they were both against Greg. Hall. They were both against Greg Hall, yeah. and then the yeah. penalty at Shamrock Park was a handball also against Greg Hall. <laughs> Man is no luck. <laughs> is he still at the club? No. <laughs> <laughs> Here, a hundred grand wouldn't buy you, Greg Hall. To be fair, he's been absolutely brilliant. That's so very true. Yeah. He Players he's. Like that are... he's Hard to come by these days. Um, just when you're saying there, you know, about Portadown Korean games, there's been a couple of classics over the years at Shamrock Park. The, well, a classic from your perspective, not from ours. Yeah. Do you remember the game he's came back and won 4 3 after yeah. being 3 0 down with 20 minutes to go? Oh, that was an absolute. Don't sickness. remember that. Just to know, yeah, we were... Neil, uh, the guy who scored the winning goal that night, Mark Gullen, is now my next door neighbor. So. I always come a wee wave every morning. I'll tell him you're asking for. <laughs> it, it probably might have been the only goal he scores. Uh, po- possibly, probably was, but possibly. that was a crazy match that night. So it was. Yeah, I, I think I think we went top of the league that night as well. <laughs> um, that was crazy because Snowy scored and Boise scored and Curry scored and Mark scored and I mad night, mad night. And it, it I remember us playing down poor down the sky. And I think was a David O'Hare. He he punched yeah, something. Yeah, about. <laughs> Made it on the what would you call that soccer AM, didn't they? Yeah, that's it. He, he, uh, he, he, he dropped the shoulder and all and passed it straight yeah. to the player. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, I was outstanding. I always remember another one. Uh, this is going back, this is going back nearly 20 years, like, and it was. We were champions at the time, and you came down, and Gareth McCauley was playing for us, and he's beat us 5 1 at Shamrock Park. But oh, Paul, oh, Mac- yes. Paul, Paul McAreevy ended up doing nets for us because Davy Well got sent off. <laughs> Do you remember that? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was the Korean side that probably won the 2003 Irish Cup. It was, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah because that, that, was, that was a heck of a team, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. So. Time flies. It, it, that's how. How would you guys? I, I've seen a few clips, you know, in the papers recently, and they've been like ranking each team season so far. How would you three guys rank Korean so far? Because you know you started off really well, then you've dipped, and you've not won in six in the league, but you've got a cup final to look forward to uh, against Clippenbo here in, in six weeks' time. So, how would you three rank Korean season thus far? That's that's a good good uh, good question. Actually, I'm. Um... Personally speaking, from my own point of view, I think I think we we, st- we we started badly. We lost the first two, and then we went on a, a really really good run. But I think almost Korean they're almost victims of their own success now because the bar has been raised so high over the last three, four, five years in terms of constantly at the top end of the table competing for the league, competing for trophies that. Fans have almost got spoiled now. Um, and if you dip below that, then it's looked upon as like a bad run or it's a bad season, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But I would take great heart from like we speak to Orton, obviously, like you know, every week, like yourself, you would speak to your manager, and he, he would inspire confidence in you, just basically saying that yes, it's a bad run, but he's not worried because he knows he's got too many good players for that bad run to continue. And when your manager says that and you see the players that they have, that, that's good enough for me. And at the moment, yes, the results haven't been particularly good in the league in the last little while, but I've no doubt that second half of the season will come good. Yeah, no, for, for, I agree with you entirely there because there's a lot of teams nowadays, you know, victims of their own success or a manager's a victim of his own success, you know, mm. has them punching above their weight and then they go on a bad run and suddenly it's, you know, the, the knives are out and they get sacked and all sorts and then the fans turn and you, which is something you don't like to see. And Corian, I can know you're seventh at the minute and he's, he's had a disappointing uh, Boxing Day game. Well, Boxing Day plus one against Balamina. I'm sure that stung a wee bit. But like you say, you know, Corian, they're always more than capable of going on a great run. He's smashing players, Shevlin's banging them in, you know, Owen Bradley's a handful, Stephen Lowry, you know, the list is endless, Josh Carson. And uh, and Conor McKendry, we've barely even touched touched on him yet. And um, these are more than capable of going on a <laughs> more than capable of going on a really good run. But hopefully not this Saturday, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, Johnny, Stevie, think, what do you think? No, I think I would agree with what you're saying, Dee. And I, I think that the thing is, I don't think there's been really bad performances. I don't think you can look at any game and say, "Oh, Corey, were really bad that day." I think there's been moments in games where 
slightly the, the coin hasn't fell for them. I think the Lumfield game was was a big game, a couple of controversial decisions, which if you flip that round, if if they if they're given, you could come out of that game with three points and it sets you off, gives you a real morale boosting. Unfortunately, Corey and lost that day. You go to Glenavon the following week, lose that one again as well. And it, it just is a bit of a spiral. And it's one of those ones where the goals that were flowing three, four, five weeks previously just aren't coming as easy. But the, you look at the side, as Nate's saying there, there's, there's quality players through it. And I think the big thing now is getting the likes of Curtis and, and James McLaughlin and, and get it into the side because those are two guys that can get you a goal out like anywhere. They all said on, on Saturday, Curtis, you just see his movement. He picks up those fox in the box goals and he just gives you something different. And, and James scored <coughs> a couple of cracking goals when they come back there pre Christmas. So that'll be a big boost to go alongside the likes of Matthew Sevlin, who has been scoring freely so far this season. Yeah, I'd be, I'm realistic as well. And all the guys have made really good points. I think the last few years we've definitely been punching above our weight, considering the investment and the full time aspect elsewhere. And you know, I think you know if you're finishing in the, you know, if you finish second in the league the last few years has been some achievement by by Warren and, and the players. And you know, to call a spade a spade, the top three should be going to Warren Lumfield with the money and the investment and everyone else. And you know, but at the end of the day, we've we've upset the apple cart, so we speak, and finished second a few years as well. So you know, yeah, we're sitting seventh from the table, but you know, we're better than seventh in my opinion. Um, but it's just the last six games we just can't put in the league game, so I just can't put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, if you take our last two cup games, we've scored us at 12 goals. So, <laughs> you know, I'm sure Orm would take a 1 0 cup win and then a 1 0 a few 1 0s in the league. But yeah, it has to turn and it will turn. And, and D made a great point about Orm not being too worried because, yeah, the performances haven't been that bad. You know, we got beaten box today plus one, but like at 90 minutes, I was raging we weren't winning because we had so many chances. So they never mind leaving. Should have won it. Yeah, so they leave empty handed. It just. Uh, when the two guys went down injured and then the ball came back all into the box and back in the eight, it was just you just knew it was one of them games, you just knew you were gonna lose it probably. Um so yeah, look it'll turn, hopefully it'll turn and, and turn on Saturday. Sorry for sorry for Portland fans, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no it's only a thing. Yeah. If I turn if I turn the question around to you, I mean, how do you view Port of Downs season? Well, we've talked about this a lot on the show and there is a bit of disgruntlement at the minute. But I think last season, Portadown overachieved by finishing ninth when a lot of people had us as odds on favourites to finish last. Now, I know obviously there was no relegation and at the end of the day, it didn't really matter because no one was going up or no one was going down. But I think we punched above our weight this season. But we always said, anybody that's realistic said, if you finish the ninth or tenth, you take it because you're avoiding the, the relegation and the relegation playoffs. And we always said, realistically, the bottom four in whatever order would be Portadown, Carrick, Dungannon and Warren Point. Now, I think what's disappointing to a lot of Portadown fans is we've led so many games this season and just came up short, just at the death. We've been pipped, dropped the up. You know, we conceded a last-minute goal in the first game of the season against Glenavon. We conceded a last-minute equaliser against Larne. Um we conceded late against Limfield. You know, there's been a few games where it's been so close. Then on the flip side, we have put in decent performances as well. And we've got, you know, we've, we've drew with Lauren, we've drew with Cliftonville, and um, we've drew away to the Glens, you know, with Limfield as well. But we just can't get the wins. And then I think what's frustrating a lot of people is we've, we've, we've got hammered twice by Don Gannon, and that really didn't help. Um, but we can show on our day, you know, we've beat Warren Point twice. They're just behind us and they have a couple of games in hand. So I think it's 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 been disappointing. I think it'd be being naive to say otherwise. But at the same time, we haven't been caught adrift or anything like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we're still, you're still technically on target, you know, because you've got the teams in the round. You still, you know, Carrick have maybe pulled away a wee bit, but, you know, a couple of draws and the other teams win around them, you know, they're just sucked straight back in. So, We've still got a fighting chance. I personally think we'll stay up. Um, there's people that think we'll, we're definitely going to go down. Um, I think it's too early to be making predictions like that personally um, because Warren Point have made signings like Kieran O'Connor and stuff. Dungannon are making signings and they're playing well. Carrick have already planning for next season as well. They signed Cameron Stewart and stuff. So, And then, like you say, we've got 
plenty of money to burn at the minute. So who knows, <laughs> who knows who we're going to sign? But I, there, there's, there's definitely been pros and cons. On the whole, yes, it would probably be disappointing, but the building blocks are there. It's just taking it to the next level. It's, it's, it, but it's a long, it's a long process as Johnny, Stephen, and I know all too well following Korean. I mean, it's taken a lot of years, a long time for Korean under Oren Kearney to get to where they are now. It just didn't happen overnight. I mean, we all remember some very, very dark days when Oren started off as manager of the club. Boys will tell you, I mean, was it seven or eight defeats and a bounce, Johnny? Was it? Uh, nine, nine, on the nine, uh-huh. nine defeats in the bounce at a time. Um, I think Oren was going to hand in his notice one day at Dungannon and the chairman sort of convinced him to stay, et cetera, et cetera. And I think they deserve, a, the board and call deserve credit because they could see what Oren was trying to implement and what he was trying to do and had belief in him. And is that a similar situation at Portadown? They were you've got to give Tippy the time and the backing to try and do what he wants to do. Absolutely, because, you know, last season, you know, he's got a philosophy of bringing through young players. And, you know, last season, our team was ridiculously young. And, of course, you know, you do need a bit of experience as well. And that's an area where we have lacked a wee bit, but he's addressed that. You know, he's brought Har Beverland in, who usually will be well-versed in, in hard. You know, he played at Korean for many a year. Very good player. And, you know, I think that's something we've, we've really lacked is a bit of experience and know-how um, because, you know, youth and, you know, exuberance and stuff is all well and good. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty, you do need a bit of experience. Um, but Tippy's got a philosophy and, you know, it, it worked wonders last season. You know, we really came good in the second half of the season. And that's something, that, you know, I'm, I'm really hopeful that'll happen this time as well. I think what our problem is, you know, Outside of Linfield and Glentorn, and and obviously the Crusaders and Clippenville, you know the four Belfast teams, we're the last team to win the league outside of of them four. And I think, you know, going back, it's going back a long time now. You know, back to the nineties and even two thousand and two. There's people still harking back to that and think Portadown are one of the big big three, so to speak. You know, mm-hmm. but we're not like, and um, you've got to take on the challenge that lies ahead and challenging for like leagues and stuff is way 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 out of the picture at the minute and I think a lot of people just can't maybe get that perspective at the minute and of course you know when you're losing games and there has been some disappointing performances like Glenavon and Boxing Day plus one it was poor and I think everyone would throw their hands up to that straight away it was very disappointing but I think in the overall picture you know like you say you know a manager needs time to implement his ideas. And of course, all managers make mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. And, you know, there'll be things throughout the season you go, maybe shouldn't have done that, could have done this better. But that's all, it's been and gone. So you know, just, you know, keep going. And and like you say, you know, it's sort of like short, not short, short short-term sacrifice for long-term gain is the way I look at it. But make no bones about it. We are in a relegation scrap. And I think, but again, at the start of the season, anybody with a rational head would have said that was always going to be the case. But Stevie, I mean, you've been following Korean for a long time and you know what Neil's talking about, that there are fans that live in the past that, <laughs> and because of what happened in the past, think that they can still, you know, the ported downs of this world don't have the same bag and resources that they did have, Korean haven't, but yet people hark back to the glory days and, and expect to turn it on like a tap. Doesn't happen, does it, Stephen? No, 100%. And I think that's the hardest thing for fans to sort of come to terms with is you're not that team from 10, 15, 20 years ago. I think that was a big thing with Glen Torn fans too because obviously they're such a massive club but they hadn't been challengers for such a long time and now they have got that set up there. And you have to realise, boys, you know, we have to walk before we uh, we, we run. Like as, as Big DJ says, what is it? Incremental steps and all maybe, that there. Maybe so, steps. <laughs> it's maybe steps. So, uh, so uh, it's, it's just about realising where you're at. If Portadown can get another season in the Premier League, that's a success. You know what I mean? And every year it's just about building on that there. Tippy, what, what's the point of binning Tippy off and bringing another boy in to totally re- you know, change everything and, and bringing his men and you're, you're no better off. You know, at least Tippy you know, understands the club. He's trying to build the structures there. He's giving youth a chance. You know, it's positive signs. He's not just going out and saying, 
you know, bringing in a lot of journeymen as such. You know, he wants to build something that's going to be a sustainable model for Portadown going forward. Funny, because I, I read this on the Leaf preview at the start of the season and, and Tippy said that Portadown should be like a Korean. And, and funny you mentioned the young players, you know, maybe what was it was five, six years ago now, Orrin just decided, yep, get rid of them over the experience heads and brought through Lyndon Keane, Adam Mullen, Jamie McGonagall, Brad Lyons, all at the exact same time. And it was a big risk by Orrin because they were all 16, 17 at that stage. But you know, you look like Jamie's full time at Derry, Brad's over across the water at Kilmarnock now. And Lyndon's still there, Adam Mullen, he's 26, where he played over 250 games for four years. So it's all about being patient. And, and uh, I'm sure Tippy will still promote youth players and, and try and get a few experienced heads beside them as well. But, but you know, Johnny, that Orrin has talked about that in the past. And Korean at that stage were in a situation where they weren't really in fear of relegation, yet they weren't challenging for the league. So he had the luxury of being able to introduce those young players. And I guess it's all about timing as when you can play them. Because where Korean are now, he couldn't do that. He couldn't introduce four or five teenagers. Yeah, of course. And that's why probably the introduction of Patrick Kelly. Um, the R team has probably been such a significance because it's probably been a couple of years since we've had that. And as well, and you mentioned Timon's Timon's ideal because yes, we were never going to challenge for the league with that team, but we we're probably never going to get relegated. Whereas the Irish League is so competitive now, you know, like there's no gimmies. There is, you know, like everyone's everyone said one point, but like last season we beat them two one three times at home. We find them really difficult to beat. Same with Port Down, the same with Carrick and you know, and, and Neil made a great point there, you know, that them teams are already planning not only now for, for next season. So it's probably not, why is it's not the ideal time for Tippy now that Oren had? It's the, kudos to him for still playing playing the young players and, and Adam, you know, a, a, a Howard Beverland and a Joe Gorman and a, and a Michael Ruddy as he goes along for a bit of experience as well. I think as well, Portadown have been decimated by injuries this season. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Paddy McNally got a long-term injury last season. He's been a big miss. You know, Luke Wilson, you know, was really finding his feet last season in the league, and then he got a really bad injury against Lauren. So he's out long term. And then we just keep getting hit with it by wave after wave of injuries. And I know, listen, I know it sounds like an excuse, but when you have such a young squad, you know, it does make a massive difference. And then even like up, up front, you know, Adam Sally, you know, he was he was find, like, finding a run of form and all, and then he got an injury against Warren Point in the game of one there just before Christmas, and then he was out of the Boxing Day game and stuff. And like we things like this, you know, they make a massive difference to a club that's down at the bottom of the league. And yeah. probably not a massive squad either, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Johnny, go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, 100%, no, I'd, I'd agree with you. And, you know, we were we were probably seeing with injuries in the, the attacking department. The, the guys will say, you know, like for most of the season, you know, we've had Curtis Allen actually for the entire of the season, really since Europe, and now he's back. And you know, Skinner got married, and he was away for a few weeks, and, and James was a, was injured for a while, and now he's back. So, yeah, injuries, especially for a small squad and, and across the deck, and especially with COVID as well. You know, and games been called off, and teams not maybe as many players as they have at training. It's, it's it's different times, I suppose, as well. So, hopefully, I mean, try and get the COVID situation as behind us as best we can over the next few weeks and months. I think from what you're saying, like just listening to you guys there talking about Porter Down bringing in players and various other ones, Warren Points, etc. And Carrick, I think one of the few teams that hasn't been mentioned or brought anybody in is Corey and Johnny. You're a man in the know. Do you hear anything or anything incoming? Now you put me on the spot here, haven't you? Um, <laughs> Exclusive. Um, this is, is it exclusive. <laughs> I can I can just see Oren Curley ringing me here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to do an Arsene Wenger here, as I mentioned last week. But listen, I think the only team that's been out there is obviously Andrew Mitchell, and it's been rumoured that he signed a pre-contract agreement. So that is oh. probably the only name that oh. um, that's probably <laughs> the only name that's been out there in, in the papers and stuff like that. There, and we we're also interested. We we're interested in Philip Larry by all accounts as well, but I don't think we could agree a fee with him. So. Yeah, those are the two names, obviously, in the media that I've heard about. Um, and so hopefully, you know, Oren, there's always left field options. It's always someone that you, you don't expect. Um, obviously, I think we knew Rodney and, and Cahar were, were for signing last summer. But usually in the January, there's just always one night in the middle of nowhere that he it's, it's to bring in. I think the Curtis Allen one last, uh, last transfer window was like a, 
nobody was expecting. And then suddenly, transfer deadline night, it just... <laughs> I, I, remember, <laughs> I remember that one, though, because I swear to God, I was in Remora for my dinner. And I said to Oren, I was like, look, if you're for signing anyone, give me a shout, because I have to get And then he goes, nah, nobody's coming in. And his shirt Nixon signs, and then Curtis Allen signs. So we had two within a beast. We had two within half an hour. Oren was like Del Boy on the phone, trying to get deals and stuff done. I know uh, transfer deadline day, but January's been a, a really good window for Corian. Um you know, you even look, you can go back to like Steel Me Bates signing one giant, and then we sold them for what 20, 20 grand, um, six Skinner months later. Skinner, you know, you even look at Ray Hartman, Chris mm-hmm. Johns, you know, it's been Kieran Hartman, it's been a really, really good month for Corey. And so, I think, you know, and I mentioned this in our own podcast, I just think the squad point is a bit of a freshen up. Um, um, but where again, we, when we've mentioned this with the landscape layers league, you know, like where do you probably, and Orange says this, Orange even open them, it's just like. How do you, like, where do you get, you know, how do you get players from full time football even to, to come to Korean or, you know, is a player going to be available that's better than what he's got? And that's it. And, you know, and, you know, for every player coming in, there's always going to be probably one or two going out. So, um, thank God I'm not a chairman or a manager anyway. <laughs> but I suppose if we need a loan, we can go to Port Lines, right? <laughs> <laughs> Here, we'll maybe give you a wee bit of loan of that money, but we'll maybe take Shevlin on loan and we'll take McKendry and. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, um, I'll, I'll put you on the spot here. Where do you think Corian will finish this season? And do you think you will win the League Cup? Because you're not going to win the Irish Cup because obviously Port Arne are going to knock you out. <laughs> <laughs> Take it away, Damien. Where do we think Corian's going to finish? I'm trying to think who it is. I would say realistically. If Korean, a good season for Corian. Probably fourth. Yeah. Hmm. Stephen? I would say, yes, fourth is probably, as I was saying earlier, the top three seem to have, have opened up that bit of a gap. Mm. So fourth probably is that spot that you'd have to be aiming for now. You never know what may happen, but it's just going to take a lot to get those three teams yeah. to collapse. So I think you really have to target fourth. If anything happens above that, brilliant. If not, then... I think that you would take that and maybe League Cup, Irish Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <laughs> that would, that would be a this, very good season. Would you, what would you prefer? I know this is an odd cliche and people hate it and stuff because you want to win everything. If you were offered to finish fifth but win the European playoff, right? Or finish seventh but win the League Cup, what would you take? Uh, I think it's a new winner. Europe every time. Yeah. 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 Really? Um, you know, really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, because League Cup's great, and you know, I hated the League Cup until they won it. I've seen us lose so many semi-finals and that and finals, believe it or not, <laughs> as well. But yes, it's a great day out, and it's always great having silverware. But you only look at what our European monies have done with our grain developments probably in the last four or five years. You know, we've got a new surface there, and there's other grain improvements and other improvements along the way. So. Yeah, look, um, trophies and everyone is great and and stuff, and don't, why not both? <laughs> but I suppose if it had to be one or the other, it would definitely be, be Europe. It's just massive first, and it's the even. You know, you're never going to get close. Probably they learn and them feel and in terms of the investment that they have, but it helps. It certainly helps in Europe. I think the scenario was won in the Irish Cup because you have a great day out, you won the cup, and you've got Europe as well. So that takes takes all the boxes. <laughs> and your passion as well. I would think from a Korean point of view, I think realistically, with everybody probably within the club looking thing in the league as as beyond everybody. So I would say no one the one and the players, they would be targeting winning the League Cup, getting a place in Europe via the European playoff in the league and also Irish Cup success as well that would be that'll be their targets now league yeah. yes they'll do well as, as well as they possibly can but they'll want to win the League Cup they'll want to get a place through the qualifying in the league and they'll want to win the Irish Cup and that's yeah. and uh, it's achievable as well yeah. yeah I I wouldn't argue against that I think probably fourth is our best bet probably Colin Speed of Speed and then higher and that there, Steve, you said it is fantastic. And League Cup, they out. Kevin Mill, good. Kevin Mill will probably still be good for him. We like, we like playing at Windsor. So toss our coin good, probably yeah. as well. And I'm sure Europe, either through the League or through the Cup, um, will be the objective. And we've maybe the All Ireland Cup as well being played. So 
We're going to be a cup team this year. It's going to be. <laughs> going to be three cups. <laughs> be three. See, yeah, you see. It's sort of, I know it's totally different um, circumstances and stuff over here, but you know, you get the old argument over in England where it's like, oh, do you want the League Cup or do you want to win Champions or get in the Champions League? And it's just like, I'm old school. I like trophies and going out. And, but I know I totally get what you mean over here. It, it is, comp- you know, if you want to compete with the likes of Limfield and, and Lauren and stuff and Glentor yeah. and Fernandes, you do need European qualifications. So I do, I do get it. I'm just jealous that. <laughs> not not in a final. I'm not going to get European unless we're in the Arctic. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Not yet. The way well, Europe I mean, is set up now, uh, you know, with this conference they brought in, and obviously we've seen in, in the last few years teams progressing. There is a, an opportunity to really kick on in Europe now and and add even more money. Like it used to be in the past, if you, you get into Europe, that was almost like job done. Let's go away, have a have a piss up, and come home again. But now you, you're looking at it and saying, well, we can beat these guys and hopefully get a big draw, or we can beat these guys and. I don't think it'll be too long before an Irish League club is in the group stages of that competition. I think the way it's I would been agree set up now, there's a real yeah. opportunity now for the teams to go. And I, on. I think that's where they, that's what's attracting the likes of the, you know, the Lawrence owners and the Glentoran owners of this world. The money that they're spending potentially for the returns that they're going to get is if, like you say, Stevie, get into the group stages in Europe. I mean, there's there's an awful lot of money to be made. And if Alarn did that and got into the group stations, the hundred thousand pound that they spent on the bonus, that would look like nothing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah bit of, bit of change though. Yeah, you know, so it's a ga- it's a calculated risk or a calculated gamble, and you can see why they do it. But you know, for a club like Corian, they for us to try to compete and keep on the coattails of the big clubs, we would need to get into Europe and get a slice of that money. And the League Cup winning the League Cup ain't going to do that for you. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I I get that. Um, I would not fancy playing Korean in European playoffs. Honestly, I I I just I I just I'm not I'm not convinced by some of the teams in in those positions at the minute. And you should be dangerous. I think in in, the, in a playoff like I think we've had stinging I think luck the big... in the playoffs. You know, actually... in recent years, we've had we've been poor in the, in the games, which is unfortunate. Like. Mm. I think I think a big sign of our success is I don't know how long the playoffs have been going. Must be what six, seven years, is it? Mm-hmm. And we've only been involved in it twice, and all the rest of them we've qualified for Europe, either through winning the cup or through the league. So yeah. that's a testament to how probably consistent and how well we've done. Is that we've only been involved in that twice, and one of them, the Glens beat us at home one year, and then we lost the Clip of all away um, with a penalty that the only player I've ever seen tackle someone from the other way, but he gave a penalty. Um, so. <laughs> Well, um, yeah, so it's testament to one of the players that they've, they've only had to go through yeah. that twice. So, um, yeah, as well as I suppose. What, what, what would you take, Neil, for being a good season? What would constitute a good, successful season for Portadown? Um, staying up. Uh, I would I would bet your hand off at the start of the season for 10th. Obviously, you know, last season we got 9th, but it's, it's just about staying up. Um, and listen, I would love to go and win the Irish Cup, but I know for, at the minute, the chances of Port Iron, you know, no one's given us a, a chance in hell of that. Um, we did well in the League Cup, you know, we were, were very unlucky against Clifton Bill, to be fair, um, but, you know, it's Cup football, you don't, <laughs> you either win or you don't. And, yeah. uh, but no, if, if we were to go on a good Cup run, um, I think that would be, that would be good and, um, and and stay up, that's, I'd, I'd bite your hand off for that, like, but, it's it's obviously going to be it's going to be very it's going to be very difficult for Portadown to win the cup, but here it's you just you never know what can happen. I mean, like, it, yeah, could, it could happen. I hope I hope so. You just you just never know. So fingers crossed. I you know listen, staying up has to be the priority for us because I and I mean again I've said this before. No disrespect to the teams in the championship. Another season <laughs> in the championship would just be ah oh, oh, see see yeah. those three years. Oh dear me. <laughs> What what would you take? Would you take winning the Irish Cup and being relegated, or <laughs> not winning the Irish Cup? Wow. Then again, the if you if, if if you won the Irish Cup, you get into Europe and you would get all the money. Yeah. So if you did get relegated, you could spend loads of money, come straight back up. I take win the Irish Cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be relegated. That's, well, that's fair just enough. take just take the Irish Cup on a journey to Dumbella and Derby and all the likes. So, you know. Exactly, exactly. Here, Damien, I see there. You're a Leeds fan, are you? I am indeed. Ah, uh, okay. And I, just, I noticed the scarf there, like, so. 
I didn't want to bring it up. See, when you were talking about injuries, etc. Uh, like, oh. I'm not. I'm not going to labour. I'm not going to labour the point. But if you look at Leeds, we have we have hardly a, 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 we can hardly put a team out at the minute. So I understand what it's like. Are you Leeds nil? No. Am I heck? Am I gooner? I was going to say Leeds should have, Leeds should have done a Liverpool and you just you know decided and had loads of COVID cases and just get the games called off. You know, false, we did. We did. We false, did it. false positives. False positives. Come uh, on. Uh, <laughs> we haven't got say, technology, modern technology, like you know. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> um, Gunners did well the weekend, don't we? Well, that's what I'm saying, you know. That's what I'm saying, you know. It's cup football, so anything might happen, you know. Mm-hmm. Cup, cup shocks happen occasionally. So that being said, Core in might upset the Albert Court and beat Core in the a, cup. Never know. There's another big shock tonight as well. Man United beat Villa. <laughs> <laughs> very true, very true. Okay, lads, mm-hmm. I'll put you some. I'll, I'll put you on the spot here before we we close things up. Give us a score prediction for Saturday here. Port and Corrine at Shamrock Park. I think both teams desperately need a win at the minute here, and um, Port and hopefully have a few new signings uh, in the team as well. Give, you can go first, Johnny. Uh, Port they they win. They'll be three up now. Uh, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go. I'll go two one Corrine, um, and I'll fancy James McLaughlin to come off the bench and score one. Okay, Steve. <laughs> Uh, I think it might be 3 1 Corian. I think uh, Curtis and, and James will be amongst the goals, but I think it'll be probably tight for the first maybe 50 60 minutes. I think you're never coming on the show again. And what about you, Damien? <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Well, I, I can't possibly go against the Korean win either, so I will go for a straightforward Korean 2 0 win. Uh, Glagan and Shevlin to score. Okay. And Neil, what what do you say? Obviously, you're not going to go for a Corey. I will pour it out. Greg Hall, Greg Hall, all five. Lee, Tell me. Lee bonus with a winner. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? I'm going to go against the grain here. I'm I'm going to say Porto Dino will pull a victory out of the bag here. New signings and stuff give us a bit of a bit of buzz, bit of confidence. So. Fingers crossed. Listen, fellas, I just want to say thanks very much for taking the time to come on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure having the threes on and I wish you all the best. Not this Saturday, but in your podcast <laughs> going forward and stuff. So um, it's been absolutely brilliant, Stevie. Cheers and, and happy birthday. Thank you, Neil. It's always a pleasure to get a chat with you. <laughs> bar at all. Um, uh, Johnny, thanks very much. And Damien, uh, cheers and you know, all the best for Leeds this season. Uh, <laughs> well, here, <laughs> I, feel your, I, I feel your pain because if we stayed up this year, that's that's to me. I like you. You're in the same boat with Porto Down as I am with Leeds. So, I feel your pain, and together, if we stay up, we'll be happy. So, indeed. Uh, thank, thanks for having us on, Neil. Uh, all Absolutely. the journalists, uh, like Alex Mills, knows calls us three the, the Korean Mafia. Um, we're, we're, we're not in any we're not in any organisation we promise I swear we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not. yeah well do you know what this, it's practically been a Korean show because I've been outnumbered on my own podcast there like so. I know <laughs> I, 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 so, did they Dave take fear over. tonight or what happened to him did he take care Dave he, he ran away he's, 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 he's not allowed in Korean apparently so uh, no, listen, folks, but before we go, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Ports TV YouTube channel and you, you'll be able to find this uh, on Corian's platforms as well, fellas, yes? Spotify? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll upload, the obviously, the, the audio to, uh, to our um, podcast so you find it on Spotify and all the, all the usual platforms. Johnny, Johnny's our production guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fortunately, fortunately, we've no video for ours. I'd be too ugly for that every week. But, uh, <laughs> Great stuff. Well, fellas, listen, thanks very much. And uh, I'm going to end this with fingers crossed for, for three points for Portadown on Saturday. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Neil. See you on Saturday.